Well, as they are celebrating in uh, Detroit, as somebody has finally scored and the play is not going to be called back, we're going to take time for our first one-on-one -on -one segment. Eric gets a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with our guests each week here in the uh, second quarter. Eric's spending time with stand-up comedian Tommy Drake as we move the blocking sleds into place for one-on-one. -on -one. Check out this clip of when Tommy's wife got into a car accident with a certain long snapper. No, wait. Nice, I don't think the long nice snapper setup. <laughs> This is a true story. My wife crashed her car a couple of years ago. Lucky for us, the accident was the other guy's fault. Other guy's insurance had to pay for everything. One of the things that happened, my wife had trouble breathing out of one side of her nose. Doctor says that's from the airbag and I can fix it, but in order to straighten the inside of your nose, I need to straighten the outside. Well, because somebody else is paying free nose job out of this car wreck. I said, honey, did you tell them about how the airbag flattened your chest? Made your lips all thin, your ass swell up. And I'm pretty sure those are all airbag related injuries. You should have seen her before the crash, Doc. She was hot. I have pictures in this magazine. Make her look the way she did back in March, please. By far. I was in a all right, here we're one on one with Tommy Drake. Thanks, uh, first of all, thanks for being here. Oh, but, thanks uh, for having me. Now, you're a native of uh, San Francisco, California. I did. I grew up in the East Bay in a place called Danville, which is uh, very close, about 30 minutes outside of We Texas. had a quarterback at Miami from Can Danville, uh, Kyle Wright. Yeah, yeah, Kyle Wright I was... Played with, uh, I played with him at Miami. He was all everything coming out of Danville. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, He was a great player. Yeah, he was uh, the same school that I, uh, high school that I went to, I, I believe, oh God, or the rival school. Either San Ramon Valley or Monta Vista, where Kyle. He went to Monta Vista. He went to Monta Vista. That was the rival school. Okay. Yeah. But we had a kid that was the same age out of San Ramon. I hate that I'm not forgetting his I'm forgetting his name, but you would know who I'm talking about too. Also, went on good to quarterback. Be, he went on to be a good college player. So it's funny. The rival quarterbacks were both excellent for a excellent couple of years players. There. Yeah. Now, when I start, when I think for what and I don't know why, when I think comedy, when I think stand-up comedy, I think California. Did did San Francisco? Did that Bay Area? Did that shape your? I guess your career at any point, or I think how did so. that work? Well, I think growing up there made it seem so possible. There were so many. I thought every city when I was a kid had like you know multiple performance venues and street performers, and you know you just assume that where you grow up, the rest of the world's going to be like that. You know, and San Francisco had a lot of great comics. It was the comedy boom and uh, comedy was huge, huge when I was growing up and where I was growing up. So I think that made it possible. Now, how did that start for you? Did you start as a kid where you'd perform with your, for your parents or your brothers? Were you that kind of kid? Or was it one of those things that you, you know, you're like, hey, you know what? I like, I like writing. I like doing this thing. You know, maybe I need to give this a whirl. I think it was more like that. I was a huge fan of comedy, and I was really, I was into writing, and I was into, uh, I was into stand-up, but a lot of people were back then. It was the time. And uh, I started performing when I was uh, 13, 14 years old as a juggler, and uh, comedy was connected to that. And then I started really doing stand-up when I got out of high school, when I was uh, 18. But I always knew I wanted to do it from the time I was about 12 for some reason. You wanted to be a – now, now who are those guys – what was, the, I guess, the turning point in your career? What do, you, what do you look at and say, you know what, that's when I, you know, I, 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 I'm a professional now. I'm, I'm a guy that I can do this for a living. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's weird. It, it was really, stand-up really took off for, for me when I moved to Houston, which is weird. You wouldn't think, because I had lived in San Francisco, and I had lived in New York. And uh, my wife was living in Houston before I met her. I moved her to California, and then we moved back to Houston. And when I got to Houston with all the comedy clubs and the comedy scene here is when I really sort of bl blossomed as a comic when I started working. And, uh, boy, I can't think of one show, one, one moment, you know. I know that... Uh, you know, when I got, uh, when I, when I, the first time I headlined the last stop in Houston, which is sad, it was a legendary place that's closed down now, was probably when I felt like, ah, I'm headlining the last stop, I can really, I can really do this, you know. But up until that point, you always feel like you're scraping by. Now, how has the street performances and things shaped your career? How, how does that work? <laughs> is that something that you've always liked? Is that, I know, because I remember, I remember my first trip to California as a kid. Yeah. I was like, mom, mom. Who are these people that are out here just doing performances every hour on the hour, you know? It like, definitely uh, did. It's a whole other aspect of what I do. Like, I've, you know, because I perform, I used to do a, like a street style show in Astral World, uh, of my juggling show, but it's completely different than the stand up. But I think the street performers, I always grouped them together because of San Francisco, you know, and because of Pier 39 and because of the, the uh, it was more, they, 
people think that they're like homeless people out there. <laughs> exactly. But you audition to get permission to perform on the pier. You need a busking license, you know, and there were incredible uh, Penn and Teller were out there uh, when I was a kid coming up. And, uh, is that right? Uh, Harry, Penn and Harry Anderson and Jeez. people like that uh, were, uh, were uh, very popular in the Bay Area. So I think I was sort of sort of into it. It also seemed like a feasible career. Like I still think, you know, I've been doing well with stand-up for a long time, but I still feel like if the wheels fell off, I could be a street performer juggler, you know, like <laughs> just make a living busking. Well, nice stand-up hasn't worked too well, but right. I'm going to hit Main Street now and see right. how it works out. The wheels fall off the cruise ship gig, <laughs> you know. Now, uh, how was it working, well, I guess, when Astro World was here? Was that a big part? I mean, do you like that? Did you like, I mean, because I feel like you did the Nickelodeon thing, right? I the, did. The that. Yeah, I did that. That was in, uh, that was in California, also then at you a did theme that. park. So do yeah. you, are you into the theme park aspect? I mean, is that something like, you feel like everybody's in that kind of a mood to, to laugh, to have fun, to be entertained? Is that, it's almost like any, is that a good setting for you? It's almost like any stage, you know? I went from doing shows in theme parks to touring a uh, shares opening act to working on cruise ships you know it's like there were there it, it's uh it, any stage you know if you're not working you have to be working somewhere and theme parks are great there's little theaters there's little you know there's <laughs> air conditioned space to perform you know you don't have you don't have just random theaters to do shows all over the place now you said that steve martin is your is the guy that i think influenced you the most right huge influence yeah I think he's hilarious. Now, what part of his comedy? I mean, was it the movies? Was it, it was his old stand-up stuff? What is it that you know you kind of saw in him that you said you know that that's the funniest guy I've ever seen? I love the movies, but it was his whole his old stand-up. Uh, he had a special, and King Tut was at the end of it, and he <laughs> he juggled in it, and he was just he was goofy, but his stand-up was really good at the same time. You know, he was kind of he was he was a great comic, and then he would make fun of stand-up comedy when he put the arrow through the head. You know. And did the whole wild and crazy guy thing, but some of his jokes were brilliant and dark. And crazy guy. Yeah, to, like to to play both of them and to be a comic making fun of comedy. He was like one of the, him and Andy Kaufman were like the first ones to do that, and he had so much so much success with. Now, were you a big fan of him on uh, SNL? Yes. Yeah, definitely. The stuff that he did on TV. That's the other thing about Steve Martin. Most comics are way funnier live than they are on television. And Steve Martin was just great everywhere. Yeah, he TV, managed to do it. Movies, even now when he appears anywhere, yes. as a guest on whatever show, it's, it's like, Jay Leno, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's it's, it's, it's brilliant for a few minutes, you know. The, the you know what's great about Steve Martin too is the stories you hear about him from other people. Right, right. The, the, the stories everybody, you know, every yeah. it seems like everybody in Hollywood's got a story about Steve Martin, you know, and it's it's you, it's good. It's not a bad thing. It's you know, Steve Martin once did this or he, he did that, and it's like the funniest thing you've ever heard. And the, the first time I ever performed in a theme park. As a teenager, I knew going in that Steve Martin performed at Disneyland. Like, <laughs> as a kid, like I, this is this is like the path that now, my hero took. Have you ever met him? I mean, has it? Never, no, never. never met Steve Martin. So that's still that's him. still an aspiration of yours to. Maybe someday I'll get to meet Steve. Somehow Martin. perform. I've gotten to work with uh, a lot of very famous people. In now, Canada. how big of a sports fan are you? You know, I grew up. Uh, my dad's a coach, and I'm I'm a sports fan, but I can't. With my schedule, I can't like obsessively follow teams. I spend a lot of time on cruise ships where we don't have internet, and the only ESPN we get carries European sports <laughs> because the Italian crew is in charge of the satellite. So, I have if I want to follow sports, it's got to be the Rugby World Cup now, or cricket. How's the how's the that world? How's the cruise ship? I mean, what's do you take a lot of them out of Fort Lauderdale? Is it out of Houston, Galveston area? I go I go on the ships out of Galveston, but I also go out of Florida on Carnival, and I've been on ships out of New York and out of California and all over the place. And it's uh, it's is great. That, is it's, that a grind now? Is that like every day you're doing a show every day or every, twice a day or? My last run night? was six nights, eleven shows over six nights. But that's good. Like busy all the time is sure. good. You, you know, I mean, like, yeah. otherwise you'd just be bored, right? Yeah, I can't do. Like, they put you up nice, or are you just like a crew member? You got like I'm you know you have a you have a room without a, a window kind of a thing. I'm a crew member. Yeah, the uh, it's. I have, they call it officer's quarters, which means I have my own cabin, but it's efficiency. You know, it's like very <laughs> tiny bit. And people, like, the shows seem really glamorous. So I think if, if people in the audience on the ship saw me go back down into the bowels of the ship to my little <laughs> cabin, they would be shocked. You know, it's very much a closet. Okay, last question. Where are you at in five years? Where do you want to be at in five years? Oh, wow, that's a really good question. I would love to still be doing shows on cruise ships, but I would also like to be doing that. Uh, some sort of headlining theater tour where people knew who I was. I could sell some tickets, you know. Like that would be that would be someone opening ideal. for you. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's someone where you want to be. You, you know, I toured someone opening for you. I toured opening for Cher for a couple of years, so it'd be nice. That had to be somebody, huge, though. That, I mean, that's that's me. a big deal, though, right? Yeah, that was big. I don't think I'm ever going to get to play stadiums again, but uh, it would be nice to be on like a small theater tour, you know. Uh, yeah, that'd be. Thanks. I should <laughs> probably right. say goals now, out loud now every that, now, now and then. Now that we got Tommy Drake's uh, <laughs> professional career mapped out for the next five years, we'll, right. we'll just uh, proceed with the show. But yeah. appreciate you being on here. Thanks for having Thank me. you so much. Right. I was in a contest about five years ago in New York. They're trying to find the fastest juggling app leader in the world, and I won that contest. Uh, I'm able to juggle and eat apples faster than anybody. Uh, I'm going to take 40 bites out of these three apples while juggling. My mouth is going to fill up with apple. So don't laugh while I'm eating apple. If you laugh, I'll laugh. If I laugh, I'm going to spit my apple all over the carpet up here. So don't laugh. 40 bites. It's going to be very fast. You don't want to look away. You might miss it. 40 bites. These three apples. That's one. It's going to take a while, huh? I'm just kidding. I'll go faster. 40 bites, really fast. Here it comes. I'm not wasting it, I'm putting it in a Ziploc bag, <laughs> saving it for later. I'm not going to eat it, that would be gross, so I'm going to make pie. Rise Cliff, I don't know where that came from. You got <laughs> Tommy with Drake you with us here on Not Your Ordinary Sports I Show. I gave you permission to show the clip of me, all fat, I, eating apples, <laughs> with no beard and a bald spot on you, my head. Were you <laughs> juggling candy bars the show before that? <laughs> that did, someone t did, did your brother text you and say, hey, uh, why don't you start juggling apples? <laughs> How about something healthy? I think you need more fruit ju in your ju diet. Juggle a stalk of celery. How about that? <laughs> juggling doesn't burn as many calories as people think. I know a lot of people that are on the juggling workout, you don't realize, unless you're at the <laughs> top of three flights of stairs. You know, honestly, though, you're the one that pointed it out to me. I didn't even notice that you were... A little, a little bit, a little bit heavier. On the heavier side. Heavier. The camera, though, it adds. The it really adds. does. I never noticed it. The camera adds Though we started doing this show. See, I'm a, everyone says I have a face for radio. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but after I got on the show. It's, it's a good oh, thing. I, mean, yeah, I, I will say, and this is the lemonade <laughs> talking. I will say you are, you are a surprisingly handsome man in person. I, I did shave today for you. Did you? I did, nice. I did. I did. Sensing a moment. <laughs> Should oh, yeah. Move hey, over, Robert. You need a little more one-on-one -on -one time? We just got to be alone together for a little bit. Oh, and love it. Uh, we hit it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You know, sparks are flying. That's the important part. That's all I'm saying.